When you hear the word finance, what's the first thought that crosses your mind? If you're like 99% of people are entrepreneurs, the thought of having to look at or deal with your numbers brings fear or dread. Let's be honest, finance has never been a sexy topic. Most hate having to deal with or even talk about their numbers or finances because they're often viewed as scary, confusing, confronting, or just plain boring as batshit. Here's the thing. Finance doesn't have to be overwhelming or intimidating, and it can actually be quite a fun and stimulating topic because making money, becoming more successful, and creating more wealth is vital if you want to build a thriving and sustainable business and or provide a strong financial foundation for your family. I created Financial Foreplay back in 2009 as a way to demystify finance and I've been using my proprietary tech methodologies and strategies based on science to make complex financial concepts accessible to everyone. I want to give you the knowledge you need in order to become even more successful at growing your business or building real wealth for your family. And I'm also going to introduce you to some global experts so that you can learn from the best. And we're going to be speaking with some trailblazing individuals and entrepreneurs so you can really benefit from their stories, challenges, and triumphs. Financial Foreplay is a registered trademark, which is why there is only one Financial Foreplay, and you should only ever strive and settle for the best. It's time to slip into something a little bit more comfortable because we're about to dive in and begin. Can you keep my secret? One of the most important aspects of your success is how you start your day. Our expert guest today, Glenn Lundy, wrote a book on the perfect morning routine because he says that having a powerful morning routine can literally change your life, which I'm excited to hear about. Now, let's talk about Glenn. He des- he describes himself as a husband to one and a father to seven and He's also the host of the widely popular Facebook live show, Rise and Grind. He's been seen at places like Hustle and Grind Con, Grow Your Business for God's Sake, and many more big stages across America. Glenn's been spotlighted on ABC, NBC, and CBS, and he's an expert in automotive dealership culture development and leadership training. With 20 years experience in the automotive industry, Glenn led a dealership from 120 cars a month to an 800% increase in sales in five years, becoming the second largest used car franchise in the USA. His unique style makes him one of the most admired and respected GMs in the business. With a background in sales and finance, he uses his skills to create growth, as well as tapping into the mental side of human development. Welcome to the show, Glenn. We're really excited to have you today. Well, thank you so much. You are too, too, too kind. I am super excited to be here as well. Hey, just to get us started, can you tell the listeners a little bit more about your automotive dealership, how you exploded sales, and then how you came to be teaching other dealers how to also grow by 800%? Yeah, absolutely. So I have two seasons, as I call them, of experience in the auto world. Um, I spent my the first decade of my automotive career in your typical dealership with not a whole lot of growth. Uh, my career grew. I got, I, I got promotions and things like that. Um, but ultimately, the dealership at, as a whole didn't grow very much over that decade. And there were a lot of negative things that kind of came along with that. And so fast forward to my second season, I took a break out of the auto industry, swore I would never get back into the auto industry. And then after taking a break, I did indeed get back in the auto industry. But this time I was at a small store in a very small town, population 9,600. And I went in with the belief that I wasn't going to let the industry change me or make a negative impact in my life. But ultimately, I was going to change the industry and make a positive impact in other people's lives. And so I was able to start as a salesman, work my way up into the general manager position, which is the the top position outside of the owner in the dealership world. And over a period of just over five years, yeah, we grew uh, 800% from selling 120 cars a month to ultimately 
We sold just over a thousand cars in 27 business days in March of 2018. So really fun uh, journey. Since then, I decided to leave the retail side of the auto industry. And now I work with owners and GMs of dealerships across the country helping them scale their volume, their profitability, their employee retention, and ultimately their overall dealership culture. So to grow 800% is no small feat, Glenn. Let's be honest. What levers specifically did you pull in that dealership to make that happen? Yeah, there was a couple things that we had to do right out the gate. The first thing is what I find is a lot of people when it comes to business, here's how the mind The mind line is what we would call it. It's like a timeline, but a mind line, the way it typically works is I want to generate money, right? So I have some type of product that generates money. And as I start to sell more of this product, then I go, okay, well, I need some some more customers. And if I can get more customers, I can sell more product and I can make more money, And then from there, once we start to get more customers, then we start to think, well, if I can get some more people, then they can serve more customers and I can make more money. And that's kind of the, the, uh, the pyramid in the business world. So what we had to do is flip it upside down. Instead of thinking of our profits first, our customers second, and our people third, we went into an exact 180 where we start thinking about our people first, our customers second, and our profits third. Because what I found is when you develop people, when you can extract the best out of your people, then ultimately they're going to take better care of your customers and draw in more customers, which ultimately the profit side of things will work itself out. So that was one of the the things is we had to change the mindset to make sure that we were focusing on people first. Now, with that said, one of the first components of really pouring into our people is we had to have a daily morning meeting. And we put it in a, in a system that I called the perfect meeting. So in the perfect meeting, we use a process called lead, L-E-A-D-D. Yes, two Ds in lead. And the way it works is in the mornings, our meetings was revolved around this lead process. So lead stands for listen, encourage, advise, and develop. And then the second D is daily. Listen, encourage, advise, and develop and do it daily. So we would start off our meetings every morning. We'd have some great music with no words that was upbeat, up tempo, but didn't have any possibility of shifting someone into a, a negative state or anything like that. So we'd go music with no words and our leaders were assigned to be in the room before anybody else. Because when you're the first one in the room, then you can really do the the listen in lead, right? And so our leaders would be in the room, they'd be listening to conversations, listening to see if one of the employees is maybe struggling in a relationship. Maybe they lost a loved one this weekend. Maybe they were up all night playing Fortnite and drinking until four o'clock in the morning. And we can hear (laughs) all of these things when we listen to people. So we start by listening. And then right when it came time to start the meeting, the very first thing that we always did is we encouraged the behaviors that we wanted to see more of. So for example, if Johnny got a good review on Google, then we would put that review up on the big screen and we'd tell everyone, look at what Johnny did. Johnny got a great review on Google. And then we would all clap and we would all cheer. And not only did Johnny feel edified on his behavior and want to continue it, but other people are watching going, I want to be like Johnny. I want them to clap and cheer for me. So we start every morning, every meeting by listening, then encouraging. And at this point, we've now earned the right to advise. And I say that that way to be very, very clear. I know a lot of managers that go straight to advise. They tell you everything that you're doing wrong and everything that you should be doing that you're currently not. Now, most people are not receptive to this type of coaching or this type of challenging. But if you listen to people first, encourage them second, and then offer them advice, they're much more open to it. They react to it well. 
Then after we would advise the team on areas of opportunity, things that they could have possibly done better, then we go into the development stage, the D in lead. And to develop people is something that takes time. The worst thing that we can do is tell people what to do and maybe even tell them how to do it, but then not take the time to develop them until it becomes a behavioral pattern that's ingrained in them. It'd be like telling your kid, here's how you ride a bike. Here's the bike. Now go out there and ride it. You wouldn't do it. You take the time to develop, let them fall down, let them figure it out. So that's what we did in our store is every single day in every interaction, whether it be a conversation with a customer or a meeting with a team or anything like that, we always followed the, the, the formula of listen, encourage, advise, and develop and do it daily. And by doing that over time, we were just able to create an incredible culture of young people that were doing things that other people in this industry thought were impossible. And not only were they doing it, but they were doing it over and over and over again on repeat for months and months and months on tops of years. This is truly fantastic. Do you have any specific examples of something that perhaps a behavior that was happening within the dealership that you were able to turn around using that method? Yeah, definitely. Uh, there's a gentleman in there who, and I, I mentioned Fortnite earlier because that was that was <laughs> sort of a specific um, case. But we had a gentleman who 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 would he would stay up late playing video games and drinking, and he was actually one of our better performers, you know, on the on the floor. Um, but he would show up some days and smell a little bit like alcohol, or he'd be tired, or we couldn't really get a whole lot of production out of him early. He was one of those guys that claimed he was just a night owl. He wasn't a morning person. And, and ultimately, you know, he would pick up the pace in the afternoons. And so by working with him, by having this consistent meeting at 8.30 a.m. and making sure that this meeting was upbeat and positive and opportunities to encourage, he started to shift his behavior the night before so that he could come in more prepared, more rested and ready to rock and roll in the mornings. And that was one of the key things is we always made sure people were looking forward to come to our meetings. We didn't want to hold meetings that people hated or dreaded or did everything to get out of. So fun, upbeat environments filled with encouragement and celebrations and also making sure that every single time people walked away knowing something they didn't know when they walked in the door. Well, it was only a matter of time before this young man started going to bed a little bit earlier, waking up a little bit earlier. That led him to start feeling better, which ultimately led him to want to start working out so he could feel even better. Uh, and, and his performance numbers started to go through the roof. He was an above average performer to begin with, selling 25, 27 cards a month. We start bringing him in on this routine. And after a period of about six to eight months of him solidifying that, he got to the point where he was selling anywhere from 35 to 43 cars a month. So a huge enhancement just by changing the way he started his day, which ultimately caused him to change the way he would end his night. Well, I, what I know about human behavior is this. People love to be praised and recognized. People want to, you know, if you hold the bar high, people tend to want to aspire to meet that standard. You know, I don't yeah, know. I, I agree 1,000%. Yeah, 1,000%, one, <laughs> 1, you know, rewarding and celebrating people's behavior. You know, I have a lot of kids. I have eight children. And each time one of my children goes through potty training, Fisher was the most recent. He's my uh, my now three-year-old. And when, when, when each of the kids goes through potty training, the way that we cement that behavior is through celebration. Every time Fisher would go pee pee in the potty. <laughs> then we would all dance and sing the whole family. Fisher went pee pee in the potty. Fisher went pee pee in the potty. Fisher went pee pee in the potty because he's a really big boy, right? And we dance and we sing. And so it, quickly he gets excited about that behavior. And then it becomes a, a, a pattern. It becomes a discipline. It becomes a habit and it becomes second nature. And so we are wired that way as humans. We are 100% wired to respond to celebration, to respond to accolades, to respond to rewards. And initially, like you said, as that bar is high enough to make it challenging and make it fun and engaging, 
when we're rewarded for reaching those levels, it starts to cement behavioral patterns in us that can that can then be built upon to where you can continue to raise that bar higher and higher and higher as time goes on. You know, it's interesting because once I heard it described this way, and I think it's, you know, along the same lines of what you're saying is that when children are little and they rise themselves up for the first time by grasping onto furniture and they take their first steps, it would never occur to us as parents to kick our child and push them, you know, down if they've fallen down or if they fall down, it would never occur to us that we wouldn't want to help them up. But we do the exact opposite oftentimes in our work environments. We we don't treat our employees with the same care that we would treat our children and we need to. If we want to get the maximum amount of potential out of people, we have to sort of treat them as if they are part of our own family. Yes, indeed, 100%. The old... Uh... The old kicking people in their teeth to get results maybe works in the military, but it doesn't work so much in the real business world. (laughs) Yeah, fair enough. A lot of your focus now seems to be really on the mental side of human development. How did that exactly come to be? Well, you know, I've been a, a, a student of my myself, my my own mind, and why it thinks the way that it does, and. You know, I spent a season of my life homeless. I spent a season of my life depressed. I spent a season of my life suicidal, uh, ultimately attempted to take my own life a little over a decade ago. And coming out of that, I really had to get an understanding of what is going on in my head and why are we really here? And Are we just mind and body or are we mind, body, spirit, right? And so just all of these questions led me to become a student. I love to read books. I love to watch videos. I love to listen to podcasts and just absorb and expand. And so as I've been doing that now for, you know, a good 10, 11 years, creating those disciplines and habits of learning more about myself, I'm fascinated. And I don't mean to say that I am fascinating, but I am just fascinated by all of the things from limiting behaviors and beliefs that we have to uh, potential expansion versus potential reduction, uh, the, the, the psychology behind how the mind ultimately controls the body. Like all of these things just fascinate me. And so as I've grown as a leader and been put in positions with opportunities to lead others, I feel like I can teach anyone how to put together, you know, a dog house. Like that's that, that part's easy. The, the, the tools and the systems and the, the, the software programs and the processes like that stuff's easy. I can teach that to anyone. Um, But to really get an engaged top performer that runs through walls, who is living a harmonious life in and out of work and is exceeding and blowing the minds of all expectations in our our market, in our industry, that, that's challenging to me. That's, that part's fun. And so I just like to pour into people and help them shift their thought processes. And ultimately, when we can get people thinking right, then we can put the tools in their hands and they then take those tools and start to create masterpieces that even we couldn't have imagined. And and, and I just really think that's how the human evolution works is, is we connect with those that are maybe somewhere ahead of us along the journey or experienced something different than us. We connect with them, and then ultimately after we share our wisdom, then they in turn evolve, and now they bring us with them. (laughs) It's this infinite, never-ending cycle of evolution. I love it. Yeah, well, look, we can learn something from everyone, and I think sometimes that point gets often overlooked. Is there a particular book or a teacher or maybe even some kind of training or experience that you went through that was really pivotal to you getting your mindset right or to you, you know, flicking that switch? 
Yeah, one of the first ones for me was I read uh, Dianetics by L. Ron Hubbard, and it's really the, uh, the 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 study of the subconscious and the conscious mind, and how things get stored in our in our minds during painful or traumatic uh, 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 or hypnotic experiences in our life, and these things that are called engrams that get stored in the subconscious, how they control us later in life, and. So Dianetics was was a book that was really mind altering for me, uh, and that led me into some some other books. You know, of course, I've read the uh, the Think and Grow Rich and 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 the How to Win Friends and Influence People and uh, Napoleon Hill's Outwitting the Devil, which is a fascinating book, absolutely fascinating. And uh, of course, the Bible. You know, I, I I read the Bible. It's the the number one best-selling book of all time with 3.6 billion copies distributed. So I, I find a lot of wisdom uh, out of there that I think is super, super powerful. And then there's one uh, a strange book that's a little, a little different than what I normally read, but was fascinating to me. And it was a book called Big Magic by Elizabeth Lyons, who wrote uh, Eat, Pray, Love. And she wrote a book called Big Magic. And in this book, she talks about inspiration as though it, as though it's like a living, breathing thing that exists in the space between. It's not visible. You can't smell it. You can't see it. You can't hear it, but it's seeking. It's seeking individuals that are, that are, that are willing to bring it to life, right? It's trying to inspire people to be brought to life. And so that book was just fascinating to think that sometimes we have to slow down and allow inspiration to catch us in its web and to be exploratory and not be afraid of failure and not be afraid to look crazy or any of those things, no limits, and just explore this gift of creation Uh, that we all have inside of us. And so that one's a fascinating, fascinating uh, journey down the, the, the neural pathways of our minds in a very non-scientific way. If, if that's something you're interested in. (laughs) Hey, well, look, I hope that everyone who is listening will put some of those books on their list and will go out and actually read them because books can change lives. You know, for me, my most probably influential book that I've ever read was uh, Viktor Frankl's Man's Search for Meaning. And that was a book that, you know, for me really turned my thinking around and made me realize that nothing um, that happens to you has any power other than the meaning that we give it. Yeah, 100, 100%. There's one other book. It's really controversial. I don't know. Do you think I should share it anyway? <laughs> sure. Go crazy. Let All it right. let it rip. There is a very comfort, confrontational book called Conversations with God. Yeah, by Neil. Yes, and that book. When I read that book, there were things I agreed with, things I didn't agree with, but it was a fascinating. I keep saying fascinating because we're talking about fascinating books. It was a. Uh, a journey into parts of my mind and why I think things that I just, I didn't expect it. I didn't expect it at all going in. So super controversial for those that are in the, uh, in the Christian world or, or, or anything like that. But really, you know, I believe that we should, as human beings, spend time with people that look different than us. And we should have conversations with people that believe different than us as well. I think it's super important. I think that's where all the growth is. So I like to surround myself with people that don't agree with me and don't look like me and challenge me. And and it's the same way with my books. I don't want to always just read the things that I like or the things that I agree with. I like to explore things outside of that so I can expand. Yeah, fair enough. Speaking of things a little bit outside, a number of months ago, you did kind of a whole series on Rise and Grind about your five-step morning ritual. Can you share with the listeners what some of those steps are and why you believe that they have transformed your life? 
And in particular, I want to talk about the snooze button and people getting on their telephones first thing in the morning. Yeah, no problem. So over the years of studying and and learning, one thing that I found is most, if not all, successful humans have some sort of consistent morning routine. And their morning routines, I, I, as I learned more, I started trying to implement some into my life. So I would read this and I would try that. And then I would say, well, I don't like that. And I'll, and I'll put this in. And it was kind of like finding this little, you know, unlocking a, a puzzle or, or a combination lock, just figuring out the right combination. And ultimately, I found five steps, five simple steps that I do every single morning that completely transformed not only my mornings, but it really transformed every aspect of my life. And so those five steps are very simple. Step one, never hit the snooze button. Step two, don't touch your phone first thing in the morning. Step three, write down your gratitude and your goals, which I know sounds like two steps, but I'll explain why it's one here in just a minute. Step four, take care of yourself physically. And then step five is to send out an encouraging message. So when it comes down to these five steps, there's a lot of science around the snooze button. The snooze button is basically the devil. It is the devil himself (laughs) here on earth. And the snooze button is one of the greatest salespeople on the planet because it has sold most people on the lie, the straight up despicable lie that if you lay there and sleep for 10 more minutes, you'll actually feel more rested. You see, the truth is we sleep in cycles. These sick, these cyclic patterns take us from a light sleep to a deep sleep, back to a light sleep. Most people have anywhere from two to three sleep cycles per night, depending on who you are. And most sleep cycles last anywhere from two to three hours. So when you are at peak wake time, as you had prepared ahead of time, your mind knows it's about time to get up. So you're already in a light sleep before your alarm ever goes off. When you hit that snooze button, it immediately sends you into the next sleep cycle. So you go back down into a deep sleep cycle and you are going to complete that cycle, whether you are standing up and drinking coffee or not. So really that 10 minutes of extra rest is going to buy you another two to three hours of feeling lethargic, uh, under peak performance levels. I mean, this is why coffee is, you know, Starbucks is one of the biggest companies in the world is, is, uh, I blame the, blame the snooze button for a lot of that. So that's why we stay away from snooze. Uh, your phone, I think it's pretty obvious nowadays. I think most people are starting to realize that the, our phones can be incredibly negative. Uh, I have negative impact on our minds. And first thing in the morning when your brain is in consume mode, like it's, it's like, I just woke up, I'm looking around, you know, nobody's trying to kill me. Am I alive? What room am I in? Did I make it through the night? Like your brain is in massive consume mode the first hour that you're awake. And so when we grab our phone and we feed whatever we see in there, violence, division, politics, any of those things, It really can affect our frequency all day long. So the smart thing is to keep that phone off to the side until you've done this next step, which is step three, gratitude and goals. Write down 10 things you're thankful for and then write down 10 goals, daily goals, weekly goals, monthly goals, annual goals, however you want to set it up, but 10 gratitudes and 10 goals. And the reason we do those in tandem as one is because I believe goals by themselves, if you are just writing down your goals, it can actually create a negative frequency in your body. I wish I had a bigger house. I wish I had more money. I wish I was better looking. All of those things can create a negative frequency. Whereas if we start from a place of gratitude, I am so thankful for the home that I have. I am thankful for the $4 in my pocket. I am thankful for my body and for my health. If we start from a place of gratitude, now when we write our goals, we can wish for bigger homes. We could, we could wish for uh, a bed to be better looking. We can wish for all those things, but it comes from a positive frequency versus a negative frequency. And ultimately the impact is far greater when it comes from a positive. 
Step four, take care of the physical. That's a no-brainer. Objects in motion tend to stay in motion. Get moving. I don't care if you walk, crawl, run, play golf, go play basketball, chase the cat around, whatever it is for you. Just get your body in motion. And now step five is really where the magic happens. So after you've spent the morning being in, being incredibly selfish, which is how you're supposed to be first thing in the morning, you spent the morning being incredibly selfish. You didn't hit the snooze. You won't let, you won't respond to any emails, text messages, or notification. You won't even open your social media, right? You're writing down the things you're thankful for. You're writing down your goals for the future. You're taking care of yourself physically as you've done these first four things. Now here's the key. This is the cheat code. Now that you've put yourself in this incredibly positive state, mind, body, and spirit, now step five, we send out an encouraging message to ultimately impact and lift someone else up, whether that's a text message, a Facebook message, a note that we put on the mirror for our spouse, whatever it is, one short little sentence that we send out every single day to multiple different people, the impact that it has in your life is profound profound. You see, the world's made up of energy, a certain amount of energy that's been here since the beginning of time and will be here till the end of time. Energy cannot dissipate, nor can it be created. It can only be converted. So when you take that positive frequency that you're in and you release it into the universe, not only does it make an impact on other people's lives, but it has no choice but to be converted and to come back to you. So you layer those five steps, one on top of another, every single day. And I guarantee you, not just from my experience, but from tens of thousands of people around the world that have done the same thing, I guarantee you, it'll make an impact in your life. Can you share just one simple example of how you noticed this having an impact in someone's life? Well, me specifically, you know, (laughs) my life, my life is completely transformed uh, 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 since I started those five things, you know, I used to be a night owl, used to stay up late, used to, to sleep in a little bit, roll out of bed, get, let, get ready at the last second, run to work, uh, things like that. Once I started getting the morning routine into place, I mean, now I wake up at 3 20 AM. I go to bed at 11 PM. I sleep four hours and 20 minutes a night. I understand my sleep cycles. I don't drink coffee. I don't drink any caffeine whatsoever. Uh, I'm full of energy. I can run all day long, like life changing. As far as people outside of me, uh, we get messages back all the time. There's a gentleman up in uh, Louisville, Kentucky, who started doing the morning routine. And as as he got further and further into it, he obviously got in better shape because he was working out every day. He was in a better state because he was positive. And what I didn't know when he started is that him and his wife, their marriage was on the rocks. The relationships with the kids wasn't great, but he started doing the morning five. He started radiating a different energy. He started focusing more in on his family. He had more time in the morning to take the kids while his wife would go get a shower. He would make sure the kids were eating breakfast because he wasn't waking up at the last second. And so it completely transformed their marriage to the point where she was like, I got to get on this train. So she jumped on board, started doing the morning five. And then their two teenage kids jumped on board and started doing the morning five. And now fast forward, it's been, uh, I guess, three years since then and relationships going stronger than ever. Uh, They're profitable in their businesses. They've got great, amazing kids. They've become dear friends of mine. And so, yeah, it's just incredible to watch the transformation. Yeah, look, I agree with you wholeheartedly. How we set up our day basically shows how we sh- sets how the tone for how we show up in our lives. And if we're, you know, showing up grumpy, if we're showing up tired, if we're showing up not really being grateful for everything that we already have, we can't possibly attract more of it into our lives. So thank you so much for sharing your morning rituals. And I think everyone can tell just from the energy and the um, genuine authenticity in your voice that you practice what you preach, that this isn't something that you're just sort of saying and espousing out there to people that it's part of your life and that you're making a massive difference. You've got, you know, I don't know how many, I was like 41,000 or something members of your group that are partaking in this with you pretty much every single day. Am I, am I correct? You, you are. Yeah. It's, uh, 
It's crazy. People think we're nuts because they they find us out in the streets at five o'clock in the morning dancing and 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 filled with <laughs> filled with with uh, energy and joy. But it's 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 incredible. You don't you don't realize it's there until until you know just like anything in life, you don't know it's there until you experience it. And once you experience it, there's no going back. No, fair enough. Well, hey, how about this? You have given so much value today. I just want to make sure that everyone is listening right now has the tools and the contact details if they want to get in touch with you. Now, I'm going to leave quite a bit of information in the show notes, but I just want to give you an opportunity to let people know what's the best way to get in touch with you and and what types of things do you have that you can offer them to actually turn their mornings around and get on top of their mindset. Yeah, so the first place and best place to go is the morning 5com and that's the the number 5. So the morning 5com If you go there, you can download my free ebook which breaks down these five steps in more detail and that's the best starting place cuz you can get in there. It also tells a little bit about my story in that particular book and it's a short read. You can read it in about an hour or so. Um, but it breaks down the five steps, tells you a little bit about me, and it's a great way to connect and learn more about morning routines. Uh, once you've do, done that, if you want to follow me on social media or anything like that, just go to glennlundy.com. And once you get there, it sends you to all the different platforms, Instagram, LinkedIn, Facebook, Clubhouse, all those different places. Yeah. And the morning five is free, isn't it? hundred percent. Yes, it is a yeah. free ebook. You can download it. Won't cost you a penny. Fair enough. Well, it will cost you your bad mood and your bad mindset. That's about it. Yeah, you're going to lose lose, lose all of that. (laughs) (laughs) Hey, thank you so much for spending um, your time with us today to just really shares what I think are some really great tips for those people that have business owners, you know, or that are business owners. You've got some great tips that, you know, they're not just applicable to the automotive industry, industry, they're applicable to every type of business. And every single person, regardless if you're an employee, or if you have your own business, you need to set your day up for success. And so I highly recommend the morning rituals to you. And One of the things that I noticed uh, in one of the podcasts is you had a number of questions that you asked people to determine whether they're addicted to their telephones. And I wrote all of those down. We didn't share them in the podcast today, but I'm going to put those in the show notes as well, because I think a lot of people are going to find that uh, they're a little bit more dependent on their telephones than they really think they are. And I think it's good to get a bit of a wake up call about that, because let's be honest, Facebook, Instagram, these people have hundreds of people in their team. And AI algorithms that are basically 100% focused on getting you addicted and keeping you in those apps. And the more that you're in those apps, guess what? You're not working on your business or you're not improving your life or becoming a better employee for your employer. So it's about taking control back of your life. And um, I think some of these social media apps, as much as they connect us, they also disconnect us because people get trapped there. And they're spending more time looking at their phone than interacting with people in real life. So I want to just say thank you so much again. I am so grateful for all of the absolute gold that you shared with us today. And I can't wait to get to know you a little bit better. And hopefully we'll have you back one day and sharing some more of your absolute amazing insights. That sounds awesome. Thank you so much. I really enjoyed sharing this space and time with you. Thank you. 